Solution Solve Problem 2.17 from Mac Electronic Circuits 8th Edition by Cedron Smith. So we have this ideal op amp circuit, and we want to find the current through all branches and the voltages at all nodes. We also want to find the power dissipated in each resistor, the total power dissipated, how much power is being delivered from the input source, and where the rest of the power comes from. So lots of questions. And here I have listed the ideal op amp properties. These will be important to reference throughout this problem. So the first thing I want to ask is, is this an inverting or non-inverting op amp? Is this an inverting op amp? Because the voltage input is connected to the negative terminal of the op amp. Therefore, our gain can be calculated as V out divided by V in or negative R2 divided by R1. Again, this will be important later. But let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. So what's the current going to look like along these two branches? I could calculate the current here. But what's the current in here or here? This is where the ideal op amp properties come in handy. So first off, look at number one, infinite input impedance. That means that the resistance at this wire right here going into the negative terminal is infinite. An infinite resistance means there can be no current going through this wire. Therefore, we only have one current. which we'll call I1. There is no current going through here. This says zero. We also know another thing. Zero common mode gain. What does this mean? Essentially, if I drew a wire between the negative terminal and the positive terminal, I should have a voltage difference of zero volts. And because I know my positive terminal is grounded at zero. That means this node has zero volts. So now I can start to figure out what my current actually is using nodal analysis, because I know I have negative one volts here. I know I have zero volts at this node, and I can just divide that by the resistance. So I1 is equal to one kilo ohm, or excuse me, it's equal to the difference in the voltages, negative one volt minus zero, divided by my resistance, one kilo ohm, and that is equal to negative one milliamp. Now you can have a negative current, that's fine, but I'm going to redraw it. Whenever you get a negative current, it just means it's going the opposite direction. And you just need to change the sign. So this would be positive one milliamp if it's going towards the input voltage. Okay, so we have this node voltage. We have this branch current. Let's look at this node. This should be V out, right? Well, I know my resistors and I know my input voltage. So I should be able to figure out what V out is is VO divided by VN is equal to negative R2 divided by R1. So therefore, VO is equal to negative VN times R2 divided by R1. So VO is equal to negative, negative one volt multiplied by R2, 10 kilo ohms divided by one kilo ohm. So this output gets negated and amplified by 10. 10 volts at VO. And I want to point out that you can even double check that the current is still the same coming from this node and going across R2. Because again, you can calculate I1 is equal to 10 volts minus this node is zero volts divided by 10 kilo ohms which is equal to, once again, one milliamp. 
All right, now we can figure out our last two currents. So we still have a couple currents to solve for. We have figured out all of the node voltages though. There are two currents we still need to solve for. Notice here, rule number two, zero output impedance. That means the resistance at this wire right here is zero. So we should have some kind of current, I3. We also have a voltage difference here with our load resistance. So we're gonna call this I2. So I3 will be pretty tricky to calculate unless I know I1 and I2. So we're gonna start with I2 because I know the voltage at this node is 10 volts. Let me go to ground, zero volts, and we can just divide that by five kilo ohms to get two milliamps. Now I can use Kirchhoff's current law because I know that the current entering a node should be equal to the current exiting a node. So I3 will just be equal to I1 plus I2, which is equal to one milliamp plus two milliamps. So I3 is equal to three milliamps. Perfect. Now let's move on to some power calculations. I will do this in red. Okay, we wanna find the power dissipated in each resistor. So the power dissipated by R1, we know that power is equal to VI. And since V is equal to IR, we can say that this is equal to I squared R. So the power dissipated by R1 is equal to I squared. So that's one milliamp squared multiplied by the resistance of one kilo ohm. So that should be a milliwatt. And my power dissipated by R2. Once again, that's the current one milliamp squared times 10 kilo ohms. This should be 10 milliwatts. And then my power dissipated by the load resistance is going to be I2, two milliamp squared times five kilo ohms. So that's five times four is 20 milliwatts. So the total power dissipated will just be the summation of all of those resistors. Let me note that this is equal to three milliamps. This is equal to two milliamps. Okay. So total power dissipated is equal to 1 plus 10 plus 20, which is equal to 31 milliwatts. Power delivered from the voltage source, that's equal to VI, right? So that is negative 1 volt multiplied by my current 1 milliamp. So that is equal to negative one milliwatt. So where did this extra 30 milliwatts of power come from? Well, it's not drawn in this schematic, but an op amp also has two power supply terminals, usually, right, is these two power rails. That is where the extra power comes from, these two power supplies. So this takes care of the problem.